Welcome as we look at the last section of Revelation chapter 11, which is the blowing of the seventh trumpet. We saw the seven seals and now we went through the interlude after the six trumpets and uh, now we focus on the seventh trumpet. The seals were the message that was clearly given to humankind and uh, the trumpets are the repetition of those uh, events with greater detail as warnings because the trumpet served to warn about the message that was given previously. And with the introduction of each trumpet, there's more information given about those same incidents. And in this uh, particular section uh, of the blowing of the seventh trumpet versus uh, uh, 15 to 19, we find a description of what happens at the end time after uh, God's people have been taken away from, from the earth. It's a it contains a beautiful hymn of praise to God for his uh, doings throughout history. Verse 15 says, Then the seventh angel sounded, and there were loud voices in heaven saying, the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. Actually, if we were to summarize the plot of revolution, uh, Revelation, it would be this. The whole book of Revelation shows us the perennial uh, fight between the kingdom of God and the kingdoms of this world, or may I say the conflict between the kingdoms of this world and the kingdom of God and the ultimate triumph of the kingdom of God. And that is what is given to us in cycles in the book of Revelation. And when we see what happens in our world, we realize that it is that battle that is going on. And I might dare to say that in this struggle between the kingdom of God and the kingdoms of this world, those of us who are the followers of Christ and who belong to him are caught in the crossfire. And that is the pain that we experience because of our faithfulness to God. And that is by design, by divine design, so that even through the struggles and pains that we face in our lives, we are witnesses for him throughout the church age. And as we saw in the previous section, the witnesses suffered while bearing witness. And this is normal. Once we realize it is normal, we'll be able to cope with the distresses that we have and we may not be as discouraged as we can be if we had unrealistic expectations about what it is to serve God. Verse 16 says, And the 24 elders who sat before God on their thrones fell on their faces and worshipped God. And just before we read that, I want to remind you that we saw these 24 elders in Revelation chapter 4 and we said that they signified the redeemed company. And now that the story is completed and uh, the judgment, the final judgment is being meted out and there is a terminus of human history as we know it, uh, the redeemed company sing this song in verse 17 and 18. We give you thanks, O Lord God Almighty the one who is and who was and who is to come because you have taken your great power and reigned. The nations were angry and your wrath has come and the time of the dead that they should be judged and that you should reward your servants, the prophets and the saints and those who fear your name, small and great, and should destroy those who destroy the earth. That's a beautiful song 
of victory of the saints after they have completed their victorious journey on earth, giving praise to God that you cannot fight God and win. God always wins. It may seem that we are defeated, but God always wins. And those who nations, the peoples who tried to fight against God, they have been completely defeated and God rewards his prophets and rewards his saints who have been faithful to him and who have uh, clung to his name and to his hand. This is the great consolation that we have as those who belong to the Lord. There is coming a day when everything will come to a close. The struggle will be over. The pain will be gone. And we will be singing praises to the King of Kings and Lord of Lords forever and ever. Verse 19, the last verse of the 11th chapter says, Then the temple of God was opened in heaven, and the ark of his covenant was seen in his temple. And there were lightnings, noises, thunderings, an earthquake, and great hail. Well, that is a reminder of the Old Testament period when the Ark of the Covenant was a reminder to the people of God about God's faithfulness and also about the intimate relationship that God's people had with their Heavenly Father. And now that history has come to a close as, uh, uh, as we have known it, these uh, saints and the redeemed see the ark of God reminding them of the perfect intimacy that we will enjoy when we are in the presence of God forever and ever. And then the, the thunderings, the lightnings and uh, the uh, shower of great hail and the earthquake, of course, is undeniably the symbolic representation of the great final judgment that will come upon the whole world, which is inescapable. It is foolish for people to live under the idea that they can do anything they want and escape. The Bible speaks repeatedly about the justice of God and the judgments of God. And while we read the book of Revelation, sometimes we may question why is it that there is so much said about the judgment of God. Actually, much is said about the judgment of God because of the grace and mercy of God. He wants us to have an undeniable evidence that judgment will come for those who walk away from him. God does not want to judge. That's why he wants us. He wants us to escape that judgment by obeying him. And the final judgment from which there is no escape is repeatedly mentioned in the book of Revelation to warn people that God is with open arms during this period of history, welcoming each and every person without any distinction into his presence. All can come to him. Anyone can come to him. And this is a message of revolution, a revelation that we should never forget that, uh, that, the good news is that Jesus saves. May God give us grace to, to share the true gospel about his grace and about how he welcomes people uh, lovingly and how he gave his only begotten son for our salvation because he loves us and he wants to save. He is not willing that any should perish. May God give us grace to share that with those who are around us who are desperately in need of hearing the story of redemption. Heavenly Father, we just thank you that you stretched forth your hand and touched our lives. And one day we experienced your forgiving grace in our hearts. And Lord, even as we see the terrible things that are happening in our world, 
we realize that the earth and earthlings are traveling in, to a desperate end. We pray that you will give us a grace, Father, to be good witnesses, true witnesses of your saving grace. Every opportunity that we receive in our world. In Jesus' name, Amen. May God bless you and grant you grace, wisdom and strength to be a faithful witness for him, no matter what the cost. God bless you. Thank you.